Editing, um, most people don't like it, but people like Gabe and myself and other people who have OCD find it quite therapeutic. Um, so, in this lesson of Mr. Flack's film production, we are going to discuss editing. Okay. All right, so. So the editor is not just simply um, putting clips together, okay, uh, and trying to decide between clips. I mean, he does, but he has to maintain the vision. So he, is, he has to be a little creative. Um, so it's not like editors are not creative people at all. If, if you're not creative when you're editing, then you shouldn't be editing, okay? It's all part of the film. The film itself is a creative process. So the editor must retain that creative vision. So the editor, oh, that was the hardest editor to, to spell for some reason. Editor. Did I spell it right? That looks really weird. Must retain the vision of the project and the director, okay? So the, the editor will absolutely meet with the director. The director directs, even in the editing process, but also have their own vision, okay? So here's the but, the big but, but also has his or her own vision. Okay. What the? Is that a carrot? Yeah. Um, are you going to be eating carrots in class? Because those are if the loudest food on the planet. Okay. Um, and the loudest lunchbox. Okay. So, but also has to have his or her own vision. A lot of editors edit to music. Remember, music comes like one of the last things that uh, is put in the project is the music. Sometimes there's temp music, but the editor kind of needs pace. And we'll talk about that in a second, just the pace. So this, this we'll put that in parentheses, pacing. All right, now most productions. This is, this is fascinating to me. Most productions shoot at least 10 times more footage than the resulting film. Shoot at least 10 times more footage. Than like originally planned or? No, than the result film. So do you know what I mean by that? So if a film is two hours, they shoot at least 20 hours of footage, okay? So the film, not the editor. So the editor has to go through that 20 hours of footage to edit the film. Now, um, if the editor is the same person as the DP or the cinematographer, the person who actually shot the film, that process is a lot easier because he can recall on his memory or his notes that say, oh, you know what? I remember this take was, there was an airplane that came through, so this isn't gonna work or whatever. So going on to the next. So um, there is an advantage of that, but however, there's a disadvantage because you may not know that it's a good take until you watch it on film. The editor has to watch all the takes to find the best one, or he should at least, okay? Now, do you know how long, like if, if, uh, if we shot with actual film, what a typical movie would be? You know how many feet of actual film, of tape? It was, oh shoot, it was like a hundred, no. Oh shoot, it was, it was something. Something ridiculously large? Yeah. 100,000 feet of film. 100,000 feet of film. 
Isn't that crazy? All right, so here's the deal. If you're an editor, you have to be organized. If you're not, then this 100,000 feet is gonna stress you out, okay? So you need to be organized. So label. So you need to have labels and descriptions of everything. You need to back up your files and then back up your backups. Back up files. Back up the backup of files. This is devastating when you, and it's, it's very, I mean, you're lo not only losing tape, you're losing a lot of money. If you have to hire actors because you, to bring them back out to the studio or bring them out back out to a set that you might have to re-rent and things like that. This is a this is a very costly mistake uh, to lose footage. So back up your film. What we did before we left the set every night, we would back it up, okay? And then we would put things in different bags just in case we left a bag or a bag was stolen, we'd have copies of, of all of our footage in different bags, sometimes different vehicles going home or whatever. So it's it happens. And in an effort to be organized, we want to get rid of all the excess stuff. But be careful because you might get rid of the only stuff. All right. Um, so here's what, what makes it a little bit easier. And this is kind of the game of editing. Um, you can rule out continuity issues. So, if you're trying to figure out on the over-the-shoulder shot and a person is, is talking with his hands up and uh, in the over-the-shoulder shot, there's a couple shots that don't have their hand, it doesn't have his hands up, and guess what? You can rule those out because they don't work with the rest of the shots. Now sometimes, and this is why there's continuity issues in film, sometimes you have to break continuity rules, okay? There's, a one, there's one obvious one that Jason pointed out when we were, last time we were watching Greatest Showman, when Hugh Jackman goes in to hug his wife at the end, the next shot of his is his head on the other side of her head. And so there's little things like that where you have to be careful, but sometimes that's the only option. It's not like they miss it. Oops. Sometimes they do. But I mean this is this is a million dollar corporations that are putting putting out these films. So um it's more expensive to hire the actor again and, and have him have Hugh Jackman put his head on the right side of her shoulder, right? And not the other side. That's more expensive to do that. So you know what? A continuity issue. You can kind of hide some of those, but you might have to live with it, okay? But this does help you um, rule out a lot of the footage so you can get rid of a few hundred feet maybe with continuity issues, right? Or maybe a few thousand feet of continuity issues. Get rid of it, make your life easier. And then you might have to go, don't delete it, obviously. Don't ever delete. Just put it in a folder that says they, these don't work. Continuity issues folder. Okay, but you might have to go back into that folder if nothing else works, okay? All right, so we're gonna talk about the grammar of editing. Okay, so think about uh, the grammar and sentence, all right? Um, you've got a set of English, so you've got like a sentence. A sentence in English is just one of many sentences in like a paragraph or a story, right? A sentence is like a shot. All right, so you've got this over the shoulder shot. Then you've got punctuation. So 
So like periods, commas, and things like that. Um, what would be a, a punctuation in film? If you have like a scene, or maybe not a shot, like a, let's say it's a scene. Okay, so a scene is like a sentence. Actually, no, let's, let's call it a shot. Because I have something else in this thing. So at the end of a shot, what happens at the end of a shot? Like an over the shoulder shot, what happens next? It switches. It switches. So that's when you, you have transitions, right? So like these are called cuts, transitions. Um, cuts is like, usually it's a hard cut. Like if it's a over the shoulder, maybe it's the other shoulder, other person's shoulder or whatever, they're hard cuts. But like maybe at the end of a scene, you might do like this little dissolve, fade to black or fade, uh, dissolve into another scene. Okay, those are different types of punctuation. Okay, so this is how a shot ends, cuts, dissolves, fades, major transition, possibly beginning or end of a story. That's where you would see a fade, right? Like at the end of a movie, it kind of fades to black slowly. Or at the end of a, an era or, or a, a complete scene, it might switch, fade to black, okay? So that's punctuation. Then you've got a scene, which is like a paragraph. Is a scene. But then all these different scenes make up the movie, right? So you've got several paragraphs in a paper that you would write or a story that you would write. But each paragraph is like a scene and it goes on to the next paragraph, okay? Or the next scene. All right, does that make sense? All right, so um, here's, here's where it gets cool. This is where it gets interesting. And it's amazing what the power of editing does. Because editing, just like everything else, the visuals, the music, the sounds, everything is emotional. Um, I was just, I actually preached on Sunday. So I'm usually the music director, but um, but I, I preached. I didn't go to the podium, but I preached from where I was because it makes me more comfortable. Um, but I talked about music and the power of music and Music is just a medium. It's an emotional conduit. That's what music is, right? Um, if you watch a scene, uh, a movie without music, it's a different experience, right? That music makes the, what you're seeing more emotional and what you're seeing makes the music that you're listening to more emotional, okay? So there's different emotional things happening here. Editing is part of that emotion. The whole movie experience is an emotional experience. It's entertaining, but it's an emotional experience. That's why we have different genres, comedies, dramas, action, different emotions that come when you watch those things. Okay, so here's some advice from expert editors. I don't know why I can't spell editors. All right, so you need to ask yourself, how do you want the audience to feel? This is always what you ask yourself when you're editing a film, when you're writing score for a film, when you're shooting the film, this is what you always have to ask yourself. How do you want your audience or your viewers to feel? Okay, so you can try this. Try editing without sound at first. Okay, try editing without sound at first. Um, sometimes the sound can be uh, distracting, like it can, uh, um, just like words in a, in a song, like if, 
if the words change how you feel about the song after you listen to the song, then maybe they aren't the right words for the song. So in my opinion, as a songwriter, I want the music to communicate just as much as I want the lyrics to communicate, okay? Um, like, here comes the sun. Da -da -da -da. If you think, if you listen to that song without words, then you can kind of picture, now that you've heard it, but you can kind of picture the sun coming out and just this happy song, right? Here comes the sun. Boom. All right? So the words only add to what that music is already communicating to you. Okay? So, shoot, I need to set the auto off for like more than two seconds. Um, so, how do you want the audience to feel? Try editing without sound at first because it's got to look how it sounds and it's got to sound how it looks. All right? Unless you're going for just something really weird. Okay? Like really creepy. Like, um, I need to show you something really fun in a second here. Uh, maybe before we leave today, but just the power of that music, how music affects visuals and how visuals affect music. Um, here's the uh, rule of six. And we are gonna watch a bunch of videos on this, or at least one, rule of six. Okay, here's the rule of six. Emotion. When you're editing, emotion is 51% of the editing process. It's got to be 51% emotion. Not got to be, but here's the general rule of six. You have to be true in the moment. Be true in the moment. Okay, story. The editing has to follow the story. How important is this? 23% important. Now these numbers, someone actually went to a lot of time and people have looked at this rule of six editors and they would say, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Okay, 23% is story. So the editing needs to advance the story. Okay, rhythm is 10%. Okay, if you're like um, listening to a conversation and, and it's like 10 seconds on one person, and they're both talking at the same time maybe, 10 seconds on one person and one second on another person, then 10 seconds on that other person, then the rhythm isn't there. It's more of like a duh. click, 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 click. You know, that it doesn't, and I know that seems weird, but as a math person, that feels right anyway, but as an audience member, it is uncomfortable to watch editing that's not done with, without rhythm. Okay, there's gotta be some rhythm of it. Well, how important is that? About 10%, okay? So try to, so what's the most important, obviously, is the emotion. It's gotta, it's gotta be about the emotion first and foremost. And then it's gotta advance the story, and then it's, there's gotta be, uh, rhythm. So make it interesting. It, it makes it interesting. When you do it to rhythm, it makes it interesting and more comfortable to watch. All right. And then it is, this is a very popular rule. Uh, well, no, first of all, eye trace. Eye trace is where your eyes go when you're watching a film. All right. And Obviously, it's different with guys and girls, <laughs> where your eyes go when you're watching a film. But sometimes you can hide stuff. You can hide continuity issues if you direct your audience eyes somewhere else. Okay? Here's a great example of eye trace. Whenever you see an over-the-shoulder shot and the person that we're seeing the back of head is talking, look at that next time. Listen. Listen. Most of the time, the words won't match what's happening. And sometimes you can see the lips move. Sometimes you can just see the jaw moving or whatever. But pay attention, and you'll see 90% of the time, it is not what's coming out of their mouth. Okay? So it's a different take. Because the over-the-shoulder shot, the person is micing the, the, what the, who the camera's on, right? So if, you're, if another person's talking and we're just getting their reactions 
then what they're talking is probably some different take that we're using, okay? So I trace, we're not looking at the person who's talking, we're looking at where the camera is going, okay? That's I trace. That's about 7% of what editing should be. So this also uh, avoid headaches. If you're doing this, like if you're, imagine sitting at the, uh, um, that you're hiding stuff with eye trace, but you're also making it comfortable for your audience. Has anyone ever gotten stuck in the front row of a movie theater? Okay, that can be kind of fun, but uh, most of the time you leave that theater with a headache. Because what are you doing? You're doing this. You know, you have to look a lot farther than the people in the back row or even the second row. If you're in the first row, then you're you're doing this, okay? Now, you are doing that still in the back row, but it's just your eyes that are moving back and forth. That's kind of uncomfortable to watch. So when you're editing, like an over-the-shoulder shot, if it cuts to another scene, put the put the subject of that shot in the relatively same place, you know, and that will make it more comfortable to watch, okay? That's a thing, because if it's uncomfortable, uncomfortable to watch, I couldn't say that word, then your audience subconsciously will not like the film as much, okay? And that's that happens, that's science, all right? It's kind of like the louder the better it that's a true thing if you hear one song and the next song is louder subconsciously that next song that's louder is better all right it may not be a better song but subconsciously that's what our ears tell us and our brains tell us okay now here's another good i just said okay the same time as well. did, you see, did you hear that this is the next rule 2d what's 2d mean Two D dimensional. Two dimensional. That's right. Okay. Now this is called the one eighty rule. This is very important. Um, I think we've broken the one eighty rule too much, but the one eighty rule says this: If I am the subject, then a camera can film me from right to my left all the way to my right, but not behind me. Okay, now this is a rule, but what's the saying? You gotta know the rules before you break them, okay? Now, if you break it, you better break it big and make it obvious. But if there's just a slight weird breaking of the 180 rule, then it's like, then you lose your audience, literally lose them. They have no idea where they're at. Okay, what am I looking at? I'm so confused, either consciously or subconsciously. So that 180 rule, Basically, it's like watching uh, something on stage, right? You watch and you can't, you don't go behind the stage and watch, you're watching on stage. That's how we're used to seeing a performance. So that's what our eyes have been trained to do. Now, if you break that, you better break it and make it obvious that you're breaking it. Otherwise, you're gonna lose your audience. Okay, so that's the 3D rule. Is basically, uh, in the 180 rule, what, what, there was a percentage there, 5%, I guess. The 3D rule is breaking the 180 rule. Okay, now you've just turned your two-dimensional stage into a three-dimensional, like, circular stage that's spinning around, okay? This is breaking the 180 rule. Again, you got to know the rule before you break it. And if you break it, you better make it obvious that you're breaking it. Okay. Um, all right. Um, here's, here's a few other things about this. I'm going to just go through these kind of quickly. And then we're going to watch uh, a cool little thing on the rule of six. Um, you got to edit when you edit your titles, guys. You got to make at least three people. Edit titles and credits. Three sets of eyes, minimum. Okay. Spell check, spell check, spell check. Have you ever seen an error in the credits or a typo of a big movie? No. Well, not that you know of. Maybe somebody's name was spelled wrong. 
But that, there's a reason for that. That's very important. It's very embarrassing when you do when you have a mistake like that. Okay, um, green screen. We can go through some green screen stuff um, a little later. We I did this with um, Pete, uh, my nephew is a TikToker, and we did a few green screen videos that um, um, turned out pretty good. So that's pretty fun. It's pretty cool technology. I'm going to show you that eventually. Um, you can create your own music or use others, copyright info. So that's part of editing. Um, and then we're going to watch a couple things to set the screen video, and we're going to watch the rule of six. So let's do that right now. We're going to watch this, and I'll put these links in the video or whatever.